me personally, when I first moved into this area, I had a friend that I had no idea who was living with AIDS. And because he did not disclose to me, um, I didn't find out until he had pretty much passed away. So that's my personal commitment, uh, is to actually make a difference. Minorities are hit hard with the whole notion of stigma, with all the other baggage that we have, stigma dealing with color, social economic background, etc. Now we have this disease now stigmatizing us even more. One of the greatest challenges going forward is approaching the stigma attached to the disease and making sure that people understand that it's not over. The epidemic is growing in communities of color. Um, many people think that HIV has been cured. Many people think that HIV is no longer a, a disease that folks need to try to avoid. People don't realize it's 100% preventable. I do think the face of the epidemic is changing. I mean, women um, are, are now disproportionately impacted, um, certainly um, in parts of the United States and, and across the developing world. Um, I think that communities of color are now consistently um, affected by the epidemic. I think to me, this is a main reason why I've chosen to work in the field of HIV, is because this isn't really specific to one population or one demographic or one corner of our country or one corner of our globe. This is a disease that's indiscriminate in the way that it impacts people and affects their lives. You know, I think if we can make progress in this epidemic, I feel like we can almost beat anything because the epidemic is so kind of steeped in, in poverty and, and health disparities and violence and all different kinds of layers of problems. And so I think it was some of the amazing things going on in the field. If we can make progress in this epidemic, we can figure out a lot of other social issues. I also work in the field with um, new HIV AIDS leaders because my hope is that the next generation of HIV AIDS leaders will teach compassion and compassion without judgment. Well, for me, I'm most optimistic about the role of treatment as prevention. I mean, I think that that's a huge um, step forward. It allows people many, many more options. It, it allows us to reinforce behavior change that's so difficult um, on its own. It allows us to look forward to vaccines and to other sort of biomedical breakthroughs. Now we have to make sure that the scientific advancements get realized in products that are widely available, uh, but for the first time scientifically, we have evidence that stopping this epidemic, ending new infections are really possible. And that makes me very optimistic about the future. So I've been, I've been doing this work for over 25 years, 25 out of the 30 years of the HIV epidemic. And I can honestly say that in these 25 years, I have never felt more inspired and more hopeful than I do today for a number of reasons. Uh, one, we have a national AIDS strategy in this country, finally, never had that. We're very close to implementing health care reform, which means that all poor people, low-income people in the United States with HIV will have access to medical care and drugs. Uh, we're very close to developing effective microbicides, rectal and vaginal microbicides. We have treatments that work, that save lives, that improve lives for thousands of people. And we may even have treatment that prevents HIV. Uh, and of course, we have thousands of donors, uh, thousands of supporters uh, across the country uh, that are there for us and for people living with HIV and AIDS. So for all of these reasons and so many more, I am extremely hopeful uh, that together, that united in the fight against AIDS, we're gonna end this epidemic in America. And the next celebration we have will not be a celebration of the 40th anniversary of HIV, but a celebration of the end of AIDS.